All right, so there's a lot to go over from <clears throat> this weekend. And my basic takeaway from this weekend, there's a lot of fool's gold with Memphis. A lot of fool's gold. They got Brandon Clark injured and Steven Adams is on the bench. So they, they have no size. They have, they have no size on the inside to stop Anthony Davis and uh, LeBron James. And Vanderbilt, they just don't. Jaron Jackson can't do it all. He's only 6'9", 6'10". He can't do it all, and he's more of a scorer type. And what I realized is John Morant, he's a lot like D. Rose. He he plays a lot like D. Rose, you know, these type of players. Steve Nash, small, quick, explosive players. What What have we seen in the last 20 years with these types of players? What we've seen is that they can't carry a team to a championship. They just can't. Because that's not how the playoffs are played. It's not played the way the regular season is played. The regular season, the referees are blowing whistles, calling fouls. The playoffs, they're holding their whistles. They're not calling fouls on half of the shit that these point guards are doing. Because it becomes a big man game in the playoffs. The game gets slowed down. At the same time, they're not blowing whistles. You know what I mean? So... It's a bigs and wings league in the playoffs. It's all about your bigs and your wings. Think about all the teams that have won. They've had bigs and wings in the playoffs. And uh, like I said, with the referee swallowing the whistles, it causes issues. And the thing is, AD and the Knicks, the Lakers and the Knicks, what do they have in common? They have big guys that can rebound. That's, that's what's killing the Cavs in this series. They just can't get a rebound. The Knicks are just, they're getting every single big rebound they can get, the Knicks are getting. It seems like every time they need an opportunity, they have it. Uh, Jaws' injury hurt, but LA had the best third quarter against the good team. This is their best quarter they've had all year. They scored, what, almost 70 points in the second half. And Ja was there for 90% of it. So I don't want to hear, oh, Ja got hurt. And that's where they won. Yeah, at the end of the game, that's how it ends up playing out. But we know that these games are swayed and scripted at some point. Like, obviously, there's going to be a huge point in the game where something crazy happens that either should or shouldn't have happened. And this is one of those cases right here. Ja Morant going down. I showed you the video of his hand. He's going down like this, and then... He, At the last second, he turns his hand around like that. It's like, why would you do that? It makes no sense. It's because he was trying to make you think he got hurt. Now they have a reason to lose this series. Oh, Jaws out all the series. Two of their big men are gone. It's looking more and more like they want the Lakers to advance. And the best thing the Lakers can do is beat these Memphis Grizzlies in five games and then they get like four days rest. That's the best thing that this team can do is finish these series as quick as you can so you can rest because you're older. Uh, What else? They couldn't stop L.A. in the second half. There was no physicality. Reeves was incredible. He was on fire. A.D. was a factor inside. They couldn't stop him. There was no answer for A.D. That's where Steven Adams would come in. Steven Adams would be able to body him up, you know, make things a little tougher on him. But the thing is, I can like Ja. I can like D. Rose, Nash. Westbrook, but that doesn't mean I like them in the playoffs, you know what I mean? Those are more like regular season players. Those players I just listed, they all have incredible regular seasons, MVP-type seasons. And then the playoffs comes around, they just can't do it because it's a different game. You can't play the same way you do in the regular season in the playoffs. It's, it's not going to work. It just isn't. Coaches, you have, you're playing against the best coaches who are going to adjust every single game. The regular season, they don't really make adjustments. They just go out and play. They just say, go out, let's just play, let's do what we do. But then when the playoffs come in, that's when the coaching really counts. That's when you start seeing plays run. That's when you see different assignments being made. That's what happens in the playoffs. You switch shit up. You change it up. You don't do it in the regular season because you don't want to show people too many things. You want the, you want it to be more vanilla. In the playoffs, that's where you show exotic defenses and different looks. So, uh, so the Lakers definitely had a rebounding advantage. Steven Adams is out. And, uh, like I said, the playoffs and regular season is played differently. But honestly, LeBron didn't really play well. He only had like 21 points. 
he uh, had some uncharacteristic turnovers, but we know he missed some time at the end of the season, so he's got to get back into it again. But he had a few turnovers that I have not seen him do ever, so we got to get those cleaned up. Uh, he didn't play well in the first half. Second half, him and AD kind of turned it on. Doesn't mean they're better because of the record in the regular season. Like, they were better in the regular season, Memphis was. But clearly, when you're watching these playoffs, the Lakers look like the better team. They look deeper. They look more confident. They look better, guys. Like, these, this trade couldn't have come at a better time for the Lakers. Had they had Westbrook, they'd be in trouble right now, guys. And the funny thing is, Westbrook is a better fit for the Clippers than he is for the Lakers. Like, he fits in with the Clippers. He just never fit in with the Lakers, guys. Like, he just never did. With the Clippers... He only fits in now because Paul George is out. If Paul George were here, I think there'd be some problems because now you have to figure out how to get all three of them, him, Kawhi, and Paul George, the ball. I don't think that would work. I think that d dynamic wouldn't work unless Westbrook wasn't there. I'd rather have Paul George and Kawhi than uh, Kawhi and Westbrook because I don't think the three of them would work. It's just, just one basketball. It's just not enough to go around. Uh, what else? There's, you need more shooters, more defense, more. That's what's happening in the playoffs. You see more shooters, more defense, more wing defense. Uh, Westbrook is kind of just, you know, leaving it out on the field or on the court, I should say. We're gonna, I'm going to show you the defensive play he made. But there's two sides to that play we're going to show you in a minute. And, uh, and another thing to look out for, watch out for these guys complaining for the non-whistles, which you're going to see on this play with Devin Booker. These non these players that haven't really had any playoff success or experience, you're going to see them complaining to the refs after a bad foul and then giving up free points. So you go up for a layup and you think you get fouled. Now they get the rebound. They're going down the court. Instead of you running back on defense, you're complaining to the ref. Now the other team's getting free buckets. That's what was happening to the Phoenix Suns a lot. It's happening to the... Uh, Warriors, too, I believe, if I'm thinking correctly. So, uh, L.A. needs to take advantage of Jaws' injury. That's all they got to do. End the series as quick as you can. Close it out. I don't think he's going to be here game two, so you got to go up 2 nothing, guys. If you lose to Memphis without Ja or their big men, I lose all faith. Like, you, you have to close this out. Like, I, I think this would hurt LeBron's legacy if he loses to a Jaws' Memphis I don't think it can happen, but that would be really bad, guys. So, with the Knicks, Cavs, I don't know, guys. Jalen Brunson, he's he's that Villanova type of player. He's gritty. He's tough. He's small, but a great leader, scorer, passer. He sets his teammates up. He understands how the game is played. He's one of those players. New York got every board and every second chance point the Cavs couldn't get. And that's really, that's the end of the game. That's really how the Cavs lost. Now, if the Cavs don't make any adjustments on that rebounding game, they're going to lose the series. I know I picked them to win, but right now, if they can't fix those rebounds and start uh, getting the big rebounds when they need it, I don't see how they can win this game because those second chance points are just killing you. Second, third, fourth chances. That's what the Knicks were getting, guys. It was bad. What else? Uh, yeah, the Cavs were too small. I still like the Cavs, but they just, like I said, they just have to adjust, and it'll be a real series. But I think it's a real series either way. It was very exciting, back and forth. Hard to tell who who was the better team. That's what you like to see in the playoffs. You don't want to flat out. No, oh, this team is better. Oh, this team is worse. You, like, you just don't want to do that. It's never a good thing. It's bad for the NBA. Now, with the Sacra Sacramento and Warriors, the Warriors are clearly the deeper team, guys. Like, if you look at their teams, they definitely are deeper. But the thing is, the Kings are grittier. They, they play faster. They're younger. They have more juice. And De'Aaron Fox, let's face it, he's the most clutch guy this year. He's been the most clutch guy in the fourth quarter. He's been the Laker killer, guys. But now it looks like he's trying to be the Warrior killer. I say the Warriors are in trouble if they lose another game. But if they win another, if they win the next game, then the Kings are in trouble. 
Because then they go back to Golden State tied 1-1, I believe. So now, Sac- Sacramento took advantage of every easy bucket. Because the Warriors, they were doing what I was saying. They would complain after a bad call or no call. And they're just more energetic and younger. Like, literally every easy bucket they got. The Warriors didn't make it hard on them at all. They weren't physical. Let me guess. What was it? I think I think uh, the Kings had two guys that went to the line that had double-digit free throws. One of them almost had 20 free throws, if I'm not mistaken. So, I think the Warriors might get the veteran whistle next game. I think you'll see a little bit of a change. You're going to see them get more calls because the thing is, what you got to know is the first playoff game is basically a review for the referees and the league. So they're going to see how the first game played out, and you're going to see a lot of a big difference, guys, because they use it for information. They realize, oh, we called a lot of fouls on this team, so we got to be conscious to not do that this game. So it's going to be different, guys. Game twos are way different from game ones, always. The coaching, the refereeing, the playing, literally everything is different from game one and game two. Game one is the tone setter for everyone, the refs, the coaches, the players, and the league. So we're gonna. the game two is going to tell us a lot, guys. So we're going to be seeing that tomorrow and obviously reporting on that. Another thing, Gary Payton and Brandon Poole, lost the game guys those two guys they're just not physical they're terrible on defense terrible like for the good things that all the good things that they do on offense <laughs> it kind of evens out with the terrible things they do on defense it just evens out i'm watching jordan pool last night he's not able to keep anyone from getting to the basket or scoring like he's very small he's slight you know what i mean he's what is he what is he, six one six two tiny player can shoot definitely can shoot there's things he can do that no one else on that team can do which is why they deal with his bs to begin with but they got to be careful he might be the reason they lose this series him and peyton they even though peyton is slightly better they're both smaller guys that they pose liabilities on defense i know on offense they help you but on defense that's the problem anthony wiggins man he's an athlete i don't think they win this series without anthony wiggins he's the x factor He's the guy that can cover any position, get you rebounds, score, athleticism. You get all that defense. He's your guy right now. Obviously, Curry's the best player, but Wiggins is your anchor. So you need more from him. I know it's asking a lot. He's been gone for a while, but you do need it. Uh, if they don't get physical, guys, the series is over. The Warriors, they uh, they don't get it done this year. So just keep an eye on the next game. If they don't turn up the physicality and muck up the game, I'm telling you right now, the Kings are going to win. And that will furthermore solidify me thinking that the Lakers are winning the championship or at least getting to it because I think they want LeBron to get one more. That's just me. That's just what I think. And then Miami, no one saw that coming, beating the Bucks. No one saw that coming, guys. So that's big time. Miami stole a game emphatically, emphatically from the Bucks. They went to their home and just took it from them and took it to them. If they keep, if they can keep doing this, guys, they now become the favorite, even to beat Boston, guys. I know it's a stretch, but it could be a really good series. Either the Bucks or Miami. If Miami beats the Bucks, then you know they're ready to go. This team was already in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl in the championship two years ago, so they're not a bad team, guys. So they they just they're one of those teams that's just missing one guy. Like that's that's really what it is. But they can get it done on any night. Jimmy Butler is a superstar, defender, two way player, all that. So it's a lot to dissect in that series i'm going to talk more on it after game two i want to make sure that this game wasn't an aberration so we'll see other than that guys the playoffs like i said before we've got the best coaches most adjustments so game two is not going to be the same for any game guys like if you're expecting a team to walk through like a cakewalk maybe one team might do it but you're going to see a lot of adjustments made guys now let's take a look at these two plays right here. I want you guys to look at this Steph Curry play. And you tell me if this stuff is real. I want someone to tell me. Why did Steph Curry shoot off his. 
Shoot, watch how Steph Curry shoots this basketball, guys, and explain to me why he would shoot it in this fashion. He shoots it off one foot. It's almost like he wasn't trying to make the shot. He missed. He got it off. He shot it off one foot, guys. It's it's a little blurry. Watch right here. He wasn't trying to make it, guys. If you really look at it, like I'll even slow it down a little bit if I can. But Steph was shooting it off one foot instead of shooting his regular shot. Like, I, I was watching this play, and I was like, I saw him catch the ball. I'm like, uh-oh, game over. But then I saw him shoot the ball. And if you notice, he shot it off of one foot instead of his normal jump shot. It's hard to see right now. They blurried it up. But that's not his normal shot, guys. Go watch this replay yourself and watch his feet. You'll notice he went off of one foot instead of his two-foot jump shot. And he short-shot it because he had no legs underneath him. So that's how they lost that game, guys. Curry could have easily made that shot. And one thing that's surprising, believe this or not, in the fourth quarters, Curry is not clutch. I think he's 0 for 19 when the game-winning shot's on the line. So he's even though he's one of the greatest shooters ever, when the game's on the line, he's not someone you can rely on, guys. And the stats show it. People say LeBron's not clutch, but LeBron has a lot more clutch baskets than him. Now let's look at this right here. This, this is another one right here. Let's see this. Westbrook. Well, we're, they're just showing Westbrook's plays. I want to get to his last play. But Westbrook, guys, Westbrook went three for 19, guys. Think about that. He went three for 19. He took 19 shots, guys, and made three of them. That must have been the best three for 19 performance I have ever seen in my entire life. Usually, if you go three for 19, you're losing the ball game. <clears throat> I'm just trying to get to that last play so I can show you guys what Devin Booker did. Devin Booker is the reason why they lost. Yeah, they, there's the play, guys. This is the play that Westbrook made on Booker. And then look at him. Look at him. Westbrook is complaining. See? Look at this, guys. Pay attention to this, guys. Booker, Booker's too busy complaining instead of playing. So I want, I'm going to... I'm going to make this a little bigger, guys. I need you guys to pay attention to this. So, you get blocked by Westbrook. Instead of playing, continuing the play, watch what he does. He's complaining to the refs. And then the ball gets thrown off him because he's not paying attention. Watch. Blocked, and he's complaining, and the Westbrook throws it off of him. Because Booker's a moron. Complains, throws it off him. Let's, let's slow it down a little more so you guys can see that. This is also a game of inches. So if you do even the slightest thing that you shouldn't be doing, you're going to get screwed. So he drives past him, blocks it, and then Westbrook saves it on him, off of him, because he's going like this to the ref. He's like, what's going on? Where's the foul? There was no foul. He blocked you clean. Like, you're complaining for no reason at all. Complains, got blocked, complains, gets thrown off him, game over. And that's what happens, guys. This is the new age players. They always complain after every bucket. And that's how you lose the game, guys. And that's why they lost. Little things like that. So keep an eye for things like that, guys. Guys complaining on stupid uh, plays that they shouldn't be complaining on. Oh, yeah. Pay attention to that, guys. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.